Captain, there has been an explosion near the shuttle bay. I'm fine. There has been no significant damage. Any luck communicating with Starfleet Command? I have made contact with the light cruiser USS Jefferson, sir. It will reach the edge of Antares Rift in 16 hours. The Rift is playing havoc with communications. Thank you, Lieutenant Kirk out. Kirk to Scott. Come in, Scotty. Captain, the hull degradation is continuing. It's currently below 92%, but at the rate it's dropping, we have less than an hour before the ship is destroyed. Kirk to Scott. Kirk to Uhura. Come in, Lieutenant. Captain, the rift is providing subspace interference. It's rather unusual. It's as though the interference were coming from subspace itself. I've never seen anything quite like it. If Mr. Spock were here, he'd probably find it fascinating. Keep trying to break through and report anything else that's unusual to me. Kirk out. Kirk to Scott. Kirk to Uhura. Kirk to sickbay. Bones, where are you? Jim, people are beginning to interrupt me. They believe the ship's going to rupture soon, and this is the safest place. Bones, the ship is going to rupture soon, and Sick Bay is the safest place. And Spock's kidnapped by some aliens? I always knew that pointy-eared hop goblin would outlive us all. I'll do my best to make them comfortable. McCoy out. Dr. McCoy had given me the specs on that gas injection system. It looks like a rather clumsy fit. I'll do it, Scotty. You'd think that Dr. McCoy would have some respect for engineering. Let's see how our alien friend likes Dr. McCoy's medicine. Probably as much as we do, Hikaru. Mr. Kyle, can you transport me to auxiliary control? Aye, sir. But I have to remind you how dangerous intership transporting can be. We've really been pushing our luck today. I'm aware of that, Mr. Kyle, but we have to take the risk. Look, something's happening. That's odd. All systems look normal. The aliens haven't touched the helm. Everything seems to be working. Library, computer, external sensors. Mr. Sulu, see if you can find where the Vurian went. Maybe that will lead us to Spock. Captain, I'm detecting the Vurian. She seems to have vanished through a rift in space. I have the coordinates of her last known location. have the coordinates where the alien teleported? Captain, you're asking me to transport you into another dimension. I may not be able to lock onto you there. I'm aware of the risk, Mr. Kyle. You have your orders. Aye, sir. Energize. <laughs> Captain's personal log. Transported to many strange places in my day, but beaming into an alien dimension is something entirely unique. Only the extreme risk to my ship and my friend Spock would cause me to take such a drastic risk. This doesn't look like a nice place to visit. There's the Vurian. I don't see Spock. He's got to be around here somewhere. This is strange. According to the Tricorder, everything around us is organic. But it feels like minerals to me. Tricorders don't lie, Pablo. It could be a deception, Captain. They seem more organic than mineral, Captain. Captain, this stone has a cell structure. It must be organic. It also has a wave signature indicative of some sort of psionic abilities. 
Captain, I am detecting a large quantity of these blue stones underneath the surface in this spot. It's a female of its race, Captain. I'm afraid my tricorder doesn't have much information on Burians. The ground registers as alive, Captain. Almost like some colony life form. It registers a psionic signature. Captain, I am getting organic readings. I can't explain this, except to say that every particle of matter around us is organic and radiates a psionic wave signature. Incredible. Incredible. Captain, this stone has a cell structure. It must be organic. It also has a wave signature, indicative of some sort of psionic abilities. I hope these stones are friendly. The stones are organic, Captain. My tricorder detects intense psionic energy from them. No effect, Captain. I don't have enough knowledge of Vorian anatomy. Greetings, Lord Kirk. I am Iminata. I regret the discomfort that I put you through on your ship. I wish only to preserve my joy by serving the Savant. Are you willing to help? What were you doing on my ship? The Savant empowered me to remove any psionically adept being from your ship, and to prevent you from following him. It was not our intention to do you harm. The Savant is now summoned, Lord Kirk. He awaits. Not many footsteps from here. By the Fountainhead. Seek him. I, how did you come to be here? I was a lone soldier, fleeing the massacres that followed the Three Systems War. I was heavily outnumbered. In desperation, I attempted to use my son's gravity well to propel my ship into a high warp velocity, so I could escape the pursuit. I remember reading about that war in my history class at the Academy. I was warped into the Antares Sector. I traveled through a dimensional rift into this place. The Savant sustained me, and gave me joy where there was once only despair. I have been here ever since. The Savant awaits. I am unimportant compared to him. Go to him at once. I w you are the last of your race. That makes you very important. Physical forms are unimportant. A species is only a similarity of material form, constructed from genetic instructions. Only emotions matter. Are you willing to help me, Emanata? Possibly. I am aware of your ship's distress. I can bring it to the attention of the Savant. It may help. Act. What is the Savant? A being found that the physical form impaired his emotions. And so he discarded it as a lord discards his raiment. An entity of great benevolence and joy. Through my psionic talents, we are linked in ecstasy eternal. Where is this about? Everywhere. When one is an entity, one transcends the limitations of space, time, and dimension. But the savant prefers to center its thoughts at the fountainhead, which is quite close. The savant awaits. I am unimportant compared to him. Go to him at once. Uh, can you talk about the Savant? Give us a chance to know what to expect. Nothing I can say will truly prepare you for what awaits. Are you willing to help me, Emanata? Possibly. I am aware of your ship's distress. I can bring it to the attention of the Savant. It may help. I, I would appreciate the Savant being informed. It is done. The Savant awaits.
But I released myself from these bonds and became an entity of pure emotion. And I came to this place to find a shelter from the cares of the universe. Captain, you misunderstand me. It is not my will to bring harm to any creature. I have taken two creatures that are without the most important thing in existence, joy, and given it to them in infinite variety and abundance. The Vurian was filled with despair at the death of her race. She was overwhelmed by sorrow and grief. I have healed her of these afflictions forever. As for the Vulcan, he has been conditioned to deny his emotions. I am bringing him in contact with a part of himself that will enhance his life. It is a gift of love. You have no right to love? Get a life. You can't just sit around feeling happy for eternity. What does that accomplish? Accomplishment is transitory, Captain. All structures collapse. All civilizations die. All marvels and wonders are forgotten. If it is useless to build, then obviously only the moment matters. The pursuit of joy is the only worthwhile activity. All other pursuits are foolish and wasteful. Judgments of morality, does everything have to be permanent? Sometimes the most enjoyable activities are also the most temporary. Captain, I assure you that bliss and joy can be sustained through an eternity. Who would want anything else? I will send you back to your own ship and give you safe passage through the Antares Rift if you wish. Some kind of life pod, Captain. I believe it is a very desire. The pouch appears to be composed of some sort of tanned animal hide. It's old, but not very warm. Captain, the readings are incomprehensible. The tricorder has no idea what all these waveforms represent. No signs of life, Captain. Tanned animal hide. Similar to leather, Captain. Does not register as a life form, Captain. 